Hey, I'm Caelan May, uh, here for Bago Games, and I'm here with... Keaton White of Abyssal Arts, and we're making City of the Shroud. Oh, awesome. So can you tell me more about what City of the Shroud is? Yes, so City of the Shroud is XCOM meets Street Fighter. Um, it's a real-time tactical RPG, and it's being written by Moira Katzen, who has hit number one on the Amazon sci-fi and fantasy charts three times in three years. Oh, awesome. Um, so she's uh, used to writing sci-fi and fantasy, and the one, one of the big things that jumped out at me when I was playing City of the Shroud was <laughs> it seemed very unusual in terms of a narrative approach. Um, could you describe what the narrative generally might be? Yeah, so we're splitting it into chapters and giving players multiple perspectives to play through in those chapters. The ability to make choices, standard RPG stuff. Um, but then when a chapter is finished, we look at the choices of every player who played that chapter and use that to write the next one. So we use the data of everybody, their choices and their decisions, to influence the canon of the story all the way through to the ending. Oh, okay. And in terms of these uh, choices, so the options are created by Moira. Um, would the community also be able to suggest options like through the Steam forums or places like that? Yeah, so we're setting up our own forums and we're going to be keeping an eye on the Steam forums for like uh, what people are saying, how they're talking about, how the plot's advancing, and hopefully they like the game enough to be, you know, talking about it. Mm. Um, and then we're definitely going to be paying attention. So, um, yeah, things that they say and theories that they have and all sorts of stuff will probably find its way into the game one way or another. We're going to be keeping an eye on things. Okay. Um, I mean, one thing that was kind of unusual when I was playing through the, dem like the uh, demo here is usually I can pin down very solidly, oh, this is a fantasy, this is like grim dark universe, or this is sci-fi, this is space opera, that kind of thing. But yeah. I can't do that with this game. I can't quite pin it down. Um, okay. Would you mind outlining the narrative and what kind of style of writing the game's going for? Yeah, um, so a good like, tonal reference would probably be something like Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. It's like um, the underlying story is relatively serious and has some dark themes, but um, it's presented with some humor and, you know, interesting characters who are not always super serious um, hmm. would be a way to go about it. Um, and then the, the setting is very much inspired by like Morocco, kind of a North African atmosphere. Mm. Um, but it's like a 1930s pseudo technology fantasy world. Uh, I guess like Final Fantasy VI kind of. Um, but they were more steampunk than we are. So yeah, I don't know. That part's just me being weird. Uh, I basically gave her a list of adjectives and was like, here's our world. And she was like, uh, okay. So, and she just ran with it all the way she could. <laughs> yep. And that's how we ended up with the martial arts cowboy assassin character class. You know, just as you do, one thing leads to another, and you have martial arts and assault rifles and yeah. duelists and things like that. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting mix. The uh, the um, the assault rifles actually placeholder. We're gonna swap that out with something a little more period appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was our bad. We didn't give really good instructions to the folks who were doing the character model. So what came back, we were like, well, we'll use this for now and we'll fix it later. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Good eye, though. Okay, so moving towards uh, the gameplay. Um, so another thing that kind of struck me that I admit I can't fully pin down solidly myself. It's like... The combat is one of the most unusual things, and even playing it through, I haven't quite got to grips. Could you explain the now growing infamous combo wheel? So the, the combat is in real time, but every unit has their own stamina. So mechanically, the stamina creates like a pseudo turn. Um, and then within the combo wheel, uh, you have inputs up, down, left, and right, like a D-pad or something. Um, and every input is one stamina point, one action point. You have seven. So you can do a max seven combo. Uh, but those inputs allow you to trigger special abilities. Mm. And those special abilities might be down, left, up, down, right, down, up, left, up, something like that. 
Um, and so if you do that and you have that gem equipped, it'll trigger that ability. Those abilities also overlap. So mm -hmm. if you have down, left, up, and left, up, right, mm -hmm. if you chain those together and go down, left, up, right, you've activated two special abilities, but mm -hmm. you've only done four inputs. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, it's like chaining together moves in a fighting game, but finding shortcuts to activate two in very quick succession. Yeah, it's like streamlining to get all the uh, special moves to just trigger all at once. Exactly. And so um, there are elements of strategy to that. So like um, the longer moves take longer to execute. Mm. So if you're paying attention and you see somebody like doing a lot of inputs, you can generally assume they're trying to hit you with something big. Mm. Because the game is in real time, you can either dodge or throw up a counter or some sort of you know block mechanic which exists in the game um, in order to counteract those things if you can catch them in time. Mm -hmm. So it's very much like a think on your feet type of strategy game. Um, but patience is going to win out over aggressive clicking, essentially. Oh, fair enough. Um, another interesting thing about the combo wheel was when I was moving around, there were different colors um, yes. that change over time. Like there's yellow, blue, red, and I think sometimes it went grayed out as well, which yeah. I think is like Just if you run out of stamina exactly uh could you explain like the differences between each of the colors yeah so each character class specializes in a type of damage um they're all capable of dealing different types but um you know a, a big melee character is going to specialize in power damage or physical damage mm. and then the yellow which is red the yellow is like a dexterity damage and then the blue is a magic damage so the mage class specializes in magic damage the gunner class and the duelists specialize in dexterity. Um, but each class is also weak to certain damages, so like the brute takes more, the brute is a melee class, uh, they take more from magic than they do from physical. So if you have a mage on your team and they have an, the opponent has a brute, your mage is going to be able to damage that brute um, more, than, um, more than if they were another brute, for example. Okay. Um, couldn't this create a... Um like a difficult situation in terms of doing the combo wheel to trigger special abilities because as you're trying to trigger the special abilities you might get a run of just bad uh, stats like say it's the brute character um, to activate his suplex where he just like flings the character behind him yeah. you might just get a string of like magic attacks so is it possible that you might have to end up picking between doing straight normal uh, brutish physical attacks or doing a special attack. Um, so do you mean like taking a lot of magic damage while trying to attack? Or No, like you do less damage with each strike to lead up to the special ability yeah. since you have to do each of the D-pad. And each of the D-pad is like randomized in terms of the color. Oh, the colors aren't randomized, they're set. Oh, so, okay, sorry. So, yeah, so down is always, on a brute, down is always magic, but mm. left and up are always physical. Um, and those attacks, the basic attacks, do very little damage. So overall, that shift isn't going to really matter too much in the long run. Mm -hmm. It might if, you have, if you're in a situation where you're like ankle kicking the person into the KO. But um, outside of that, it's not going to matter so much. It's more in executing the special move. But the move is going to show you the type of damage it does before you go to execute it. So you can look at the character you're fighting and determine, okay, I want this move to go off. I know it does a lot of damage, but I know that class is resistant to it. Mm. So it might not deal as much as I would like it to, but it'll still deal a really hefty blow. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sounds as though there's like sort of three interesting layers. It's like you have to pick what the weakness to the char the opponent you're attacking. Then there's also the fact that your character has their own strengths in terms of stats. And then there's also the special abilities on top of that. Yeah. Like, in, in this interesting combat sandwich. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a good way to describe it. In terms of, <laughs> in terms of priority and how how much they determine what's going on, mm. um, the, the ability itself is first, the stats are second, and then weakness is third, and it's a relatively distant third. All so right. it's never going to, like, half your damage, mm. but it might affect it, like, 30% on some, like, really well-equipped characters. Just enough to take caution but not enough where you're completely screwed exactly it's enough where you go okay maybe i should send this unit over here instead of over there mm. but you're not gonna it's not gonna be like oh well i made the wrong choice and i'm definitely gonna lose because i sent that unit 
into a team that they're not necessarily super strong against. All right, fair enough. Um, okay, so a lot of games uh, that your game seems to be inspired by, like Fire Emblem, seem to have this kind of system where they reward particularly well done combat yes. scenarios. Like if you keep your characters in good shape and you demolish the other character, you might get extra XP and then you also don't have to deal with the penalty of now all my party is dead, oh god. Yeah. Um, I wonder if, if if your combat scenarios rewarded particularly well done combat scenarios such as like with upgrades, with XP or with favorable uh, narrative choices. So we're keeping, we're, we're purposely keeping the combat and narrative from affecting each other because we don't want to like corner someone into having to choose a specific faction or path because it would benefit their gameplay choice. Mm -hmm. But we do have systems that reward different types of mechanic choices by the players. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that by giving them um, abilities and items that they can equip that will adjust like rewards so like um the group can get an ability where if he defeats someone and he's under 25 percent hp he'll get healed oh, wow. or, um, i think and uh <laughs> that might be one um and then, you know so other stuff like uh, ap regen is increased when x happens or like mm. within 10 seconds of moving with a certain character you do more damage so to encourage like running and gunning or something like um, so it's, it's, it's set up so that you can customize what you want those bonuses to be. Yeah. And then you can suit, you can adjust your team and those bonuses to match the play style, essentially. So is it just like uh, one or two trinkets for each character and then you like place it on as you wish? Um, it's determined by character class and then there's going to be a variety of them for each class that you unlock over the course of the game. And then as you play the game, those are going to kind of evolve mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to choose like, oh, well, I want it to evolve in this way, which gives me this added added thing on top of the base bonus. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be kind of like, I like this bonus and this evolution looks really good. I'm going to go with that. Hmm. So you said earlier about how um, you didn't want to force people to make particular choices for mechanical effect. Um, like you didn't want them to take particular factions so they might do better in ter certain scenarios. I wondered if there were particular shorter term narrative choices that might affect the combat environment. Like say for instance, if you pick one option incorrectly or correctly or whatever, your party might be more split up or might be more closer together and things like that. Um, we haven't put anything in the game yet that splits the party up, but mm -hmm. like uh, there are going to be certain scenarios where if you're with a certain faction, you're going to be encountering different battles than if you were with another faction. So like uh, if uh, you're with Azura, you might end up fighting an enemy on the deck of her ship mm -hmm. instead of if you're allied with Naveed who hates, Az who hates Azura. Uh, mm -hmm. You would almost certainly not be on the deck of her ship because she would not let you on the dock of her, on the deck of her ship. Um, so in that sense, like your choices are going to influence the path you take and kind of the battles that you encounter. Um, it would be really interesting to have like, oh, you know, choice beforehand, and then that choice determines like either what map you're on or what your location is within that map. Um, we haven't done anything like that yet, but mm. there's still time. So yeah, it's possible. Like you might have two players who go on the exact same map but they make different choices and end up having a wildly different experience with it yeah i mean that would be really cool and, uh, <laughs> yeah that's something we could probably do so i might i might take that away and uh hand it to the designer and see what he thinks that's uh, sweet <laughs> Yeah, thanks for uh, taking part in the interview. Um, where can they find um, City of the Shroud? So we are on Steam. We have a coming soon page where you can add us to a wish list. Uh, we are also uh, we have our Kickstarter page, which has a link to our pre-orders. We have our website, which is abyssalarts.com, and then we have our standard Abyssal Arts Twitter account and Facebook. Um, so any of those. <laughs> Is there a release date currently? Uh, not currently. We're aiming for like first half of next year. Um, so currently we're aiming for like 
February, March, uh, but we will see because it's game development and you never know quite what's going to happen. Yeah, things are messy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, no problem.